also take CISS 143. Another way to look at it is a student table will have a list of all the students. A class table will have a list of all the classes, and that intersecting table will simply match up what student is in what class. Each of these are foreign keys, which means we couldn't put in a non-existent student here, nor a non-existent class. And the combination of these are the primary key. So in other words, it's okay to have student one in there twice, because student ID is not by itself the primary key. It's the combination of student ID and class ID that's the primary key to this table. All right? Therefore, as long as that combination isn't duplicated, I'm okay. So, student takes five classes. What does that mean? It means that there's five rows for him in this table. Student takes one class. What does that mean? There's one row for him in that table. All right? Notice we're not storing anything other than the keys. We never store anything to point to a table other than the primary key. So we don't put the student's name in here. We don't put the course name. We don't put the number of credit hours. Nothing like that. All right? We simply point to the table that does contain that information. Now, what I could not do is I could not put student number one, Joe, in CISS 143 twice. But that makes sense. You know, especially if you consider this, if you simplify this and consider this just being for one semester, you know. I think my CSS 143 is a delightful class, but it's not so delightful that someone would want to sign up for it twice, all right? At least not within the same semester. So therefore, again, if you're considering the same semester, you wouldn't be able to do that because that combination is already in the table. There is no foreign key in student. There's a foreign key from the class roster table to student and from the class or from the class roster table to the class. There is no foreign key in student. One way to think about it that always helped me was that every you start you can start at any table and work out. And so if you you know you can you know you don't everyone doesn't have to have that secondary key in it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, for example, yeah, if there was a student, let's say, that wasn't taking any classes this semester, you know, they wouldn't be in that table at all. Or if there's a class that no one uh, signed up for, you know, it wouldn't be in that table at all. Those are the two main relationships that you run into. And again, the way to implement them is, is fairly straightforward. One to many is very straightforward. You have a foreign key in one table on the many side that points to the one side. All right. Many to many, there are a couple of options. This is the simplest option, where you create an intersecting table. The primary key of the two tables together become the primary key of this table, and each part of that primary key becomes a foreign key, back to the original table. <coughs> This is the way you do it if this combination would have to be unique. All right? In some cases, that combination wouldn't be, have to be unique. All right? For example, um, let's say if we had a table between magazines and subscribers. All right? We were a publisher and we had magazines and subscribers. We couldn't make, the, we couldn't make an inter that, that's obviously a many, many relationship, right? Because one subscriber can have many subscriptions to different magazines and one magazine can have many subscribers. We wouldn't want to make the primary key of that intersecting table, that subscription table, we wouldn't want to make it a combination of uh, subscriber ID and magazine ID, because someone could potentially subscribe to a magazine more than once, and that combination wouldn't be allowed in that table more than once. What you do in that case is you make a generated key, you use an auto number key for like subscription ID, and then you make those two. So alternately, I could do this in this table, is not make this the primary key, but make a unique class roster key. All right, and then these two would just be foreign keys. We'll probably go over examples of that going forward. For now, if you got this part, you're okay. 
last relationship that we'll just touch on briefly um, is a one-to-one -one relationship. And one example of a one-to-one -one relationship is where there truly is, between two different entities, a one-to-one -one relationship. All right? For example, um, well, I assume this is valid. I guess I don't know for sure. Between state and governor. All right? Each state has a governor. Right? And a governor is only the governor of one state. You can't be the governor of Ohio and Pennsylvania at the same time. All right? I assume you can. I don't know. Maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe we can look that up. We're going to assume that you can because that just seems dumb. Where would you live? You know? Uh, so that's an example of a real one-to-one -one relationship. So if you had a table of politicians, in a table of, or a table of governors, let's say, in a table of states, all right, that would really be a one-to-one -one relationship. And there are things you can do and create a unique index and all that to implement that, but actually those are pretty rare. It's really tough almost to think of one. In the college, maybe the relationship between dean and division, all right. I'm pretty sure you can't be the dean of more than one division. If you're the dean of the business division, you can't also be the dean of engineering. They have, they have their own dean. And every division, I think, can only have one dean. To my knowledge, there's no such thing as like tag team deans or something like that, or co-deans. All right? <coughs> so that would be another example. Sort of a different kind of one-to-one -one relationship altogether is what's called an entity subtype. And that is when certain members of an entity have some additional information about them where not every member of that entity does. Let me give you a for instance. If we were doing a database for the school here, all right, there are students, and there are students that are international students. All right? Now, there's some information about international students that exists that doesn't exist for all students. You know, the visa, the, the, the nation of origin, uh, all these different things, uh, the, the number of the visa, the expiration date, the kind of visa, all these things are attributes of international students, but not of all students. All right? What you can do is you can set up a one-to-one -one relationship between a student and an international student where the student has all the fields that are in common, and the international student table would have just those fields that were um, relevant for international students. So if you were a student that was not an international student, you'd have information in the student table. If you were a student that was an international student, you'd have information in the student table and in the international student table. Another example of that would be customers. You know, if you were doing a, a uh, if you had a business with different sorts of customers. So you might have regular customers, all right, you might have wholesale customers, you might have retail customers, you might have government customers, you might have educational customers, you might have nonprofit customers, and maybe you could be more than one of those things at the same time. I don't know. You might be able to be a school and nonprofit. I don't know. Well, in that case, there's something that you're going to store, there's some things that you're going to store about every customer, all right? You know, the, the customer number, the name, the billing address, the shipping address, all that sort of stuff. <coughs> but then for each subcategory of customers, there's pieces of information that are relevant for them that aren't relevant for the other types. So for government customers, there may be all sorts of federal ID numbers or whatever. Yes. So then do you, does, would each customer, every customer then would have a wholesale customer ID, a retail? No. 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 It, it, but, well, they would just remain blank, or? No, they, they simply wouldn't have a row in that table. Uh -huh. So let's say, let's say that, let's say in the customer table, we have the customer ID and the name and the billing address. And for simplicity, I'll just say one field for billing address. 
and the shipping address. Every customer has those. All right. Um, a government customer might have a, you know, a federal ID number, a branch of the government. I don't know, I'm making this up, all right? Maybe the level of government. Is it a city, is it a state, or is it a county, or is it a federal agency, all right? So there's no separate government ID. You would, if customer 100, let's say it was the US Navy, all right? Customer 100, US Navy, billing address, shipping address, and then, Customer 100 would have information filled in for those fields. Let's say customer number 200 was a school. School isn't a government entity, all right? Therefore, there simply would not be a row in the government table for customer 200. There might be if there was an education customer. There might be a row in that table, and then there being the different information about educational uh, uh, educational customers. So anybody that's in the government would have a foreign key back to the customer. Exactly. And if the, they weren't in there, then there wouldn't be. A then there just wouldn't be a row in that table, right? So in other words, these will have these will be primary keys and foreign keys to each other, and that accomplishes a one-to-one -one relationship. Oh, so that's where you're getting dual use. That's where you're linking it, right? Uh, in the in the sub table is yep. is actually is both. Repeat it's, that. It's both a foreign key right. back, correct, and its own and primary. it's its own primary key, okay. right? So what that means is I can't have customer one hundred in there twice because customer ID is the, the primary key in this table, but it also has to match back to that. Um, I don't think Access does this very well. I've tried to implement this in Access and it, it laughs at me. So um, Access doesn't implement that well, but other database engines would. All right. The point is, is that this is fairly rare. All right, this is fairly rare. Um, the first kind of one-to-one -one where you truly have one-to-one -one relationships between different entities is pretty rare. All right. This is definitely less rare, it's more common, but there's alternatives to this as well, you know, depending on how much data you could just put all that data up in the customer table. That's not an optimal solution, but sometimes people take that shortcut. All right, let me look at the time. Here's what we're going to do. And we have about a half hour left in class. And what I want to do is I want to pose a problem to you, and I want you to work on the database design for it. All right? Remembering that, how are you going to work on the database design? Well, first you're going to identify the entities. How do you identify the entities? Usually, often, they're nouns. All right? A college has students. Students attend classes. Classes are taught by professors. What were the three nouns I used in those sentences? Students, classes, professors. Three entities. I can't say that 100% of the time. All right. And again, you know, sorry for making you remember stuff that you learned in your English class. I do apologize for that. All right. But that's generally uh, a good start. Let's put it that way. If that isn't the, if that isn't all you need to do, it's at least a good start. Once you've identified the entities, you draw them. And then you start looking to see what the relationships that exist. One to one, many to many, whatever. And then you start filling in the attributes. In other words, what are we going to store about student? What are we going to store about teacher? 
what's the foreign keys, what are the primary keys, that sort of stuff. So, let me narrate a problem to you. And I'll put some bullet points up on the board, all right, um, as I'm narrating it to you. And your job will be to develop a database, an ERD sketch, which is like I do there, and write out, the, you don't have to do this in Access or anything, but write out the tables and the attributes and the keys and the foreign keys. All right. I own a pizza company. My pizza company has many branches. My customer, customers order from the different branches. When they place an order, an order can contain several pizzas. Each pizza is either small, medium, or large. Each pizza is either thick or thin crust. An order can be pickup or delivery. And in the future, we might want to offer the option of dining. You know, we're thinking of blowing out that wall over there and putting a little dining room in there. So maybe dine in. Each pizza can have no or several toppings. I think that's enough. You don't have to worry about unless you want to. Um, whether a pizza, uh, you know, a half uh, sausage, half pepperoni. You don't have to worry about that scenario. Actually, it wouldn't be that hard to change it, but we don't have to worry about that. You do have to worry about toppings can be doubled. So, you could order a pizza with double pepperoni. All right, what I would like you to do is, this will end the lecture today. Yeah, there's about 20 minutes left. That's about as much time as I would be planning on giving you. So, we'll end the lecture here. Design a database that does this, that implements that, that has the entities, attributes, relationships to implement this. All right? I encourage you to work together. All right? Do some brainstorming, work together. Uh, create an ERD and create a, um, a, a listing of the tables along with the attributes and the keys and so on. All right. Have fun. Like work as one group? Or, or um, it doesn't matter. There's probably too many to work as one group.